All right, welcome back to another episode of On the Throne with Dick. And uh, on today's episode, we have special guest Chris Barber, also known as Big Red. How you doing, man? How's it? Not bad, man. Not bad. How are you? I'm good. Just got home from from trucking for the last number of days. What is it? Saturday night. Kind of came home to the wife being home alone with no children here. It's kind of like we might be empty nesting or starting to at least. But ooh, you know what that means? Might be a movie night later. You get to start. <laughs> you all think over so? Again. Might be. You, mm-hmm. get, you get to start all over again. Time to start making more babies, right? Yeah, bull. No, that that ship sailed a long time ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. Oh, We're man. good. So uh, we've reached our saturation. Awesome. With How many you got? I've got two. Jonathan and Sierra. My wife has two. Uh, Mason and Danica. Uh, Mason's moved out. We were split marriage, split family. So um, my daughter's out here whenever I guess she can. She works in Swift Current. Jonathan lives in the basement. Um, Mason's long gone. He lives in Alberta. Goes to college in Lethbridge. So yeah, we're kind of empty nesting, I guess, but. Uh, accounting, accounting actually wants to be an accountant, oh, an accountant. Nice. So, yeah, that'd yeah. be good for the old family business, eh? <laughs> He's a smart kid, so <laughs> I'll stick to driving oh, the truck. You can do the book work. So, so, uh, this this uh podcast, I guess, uh, this this one's gonna be named uh, Road Tripping because you know, um, not just because of you know your famous road trip, but because uh you know, you're, you're a trucker and, and that, and that's sort of what you do. And, you know, um, I was kind of thinking about where I wanted to go with this and, um, you know, we'll get to the meat and potatoes of it, but I actually wanted to do something that I don't know if anyone's really started off by doing that. You've been interviewed a lot, but, uh, I wanted to kind of take it with, you know, your, your blue collar backstory, you know, before, before everything else, how you got into trucking, uh, and, and where you started and whatnot. And, and then, you know, get into the meat and potatoes of it eventually. So, yeah, for sure. Well, I'm, uh, I think I'm about 20 years driving right now, uh, long haul. I've been all over North America, I've been all over Canada. Um, I've done everything from grain trailers to be closer to home when the kids were young to try and thinking I was going to be closer. But my passion was always the long haul. So I was step deck freight all over North America. Uh, I, I I think I was 11 years old, 12 years old when uh, when I got the bug that I wanted to be a truck driver. I think, and it wasn't really in my family before that. My father's a farmer, and everybody in my family's been a farmer at one point. So I kind of morphed into that. I got my license when I was 18, and took off trucking. And I couldn't wait to cross that border. 21 years old, and then I I, I headed to Texas. I used to do pipe runs out of Houston all the time, and so nice. I definitely got some experience over the years. That's morphed into equipment hauling. Now that's what we specialize in. I started my trucking company in 2006, CB Trucking. Um, it was just kind of an off-breed. I was working for a company, and, and the company had some financial issues. So I I just incorporated my sole proprietor, Chris Barber Trucking, into CB Trucking. And then uh, people wanted to work for me. So I kind of – it's been a it's been a heck of a last number of years. I've been – it's a successful business. We have a lot of good customers. We look after – quite a few big different dealerships and we do all sorts of eggs. So it's nuts. It's busy. That's important. Uh, where does, where did uh big red come into it? When, when did you, uh, you know, how did, how did you, you know, get big red and, and why, why big, obviously cause the truck's red, but like, you know, we'll talk about, yeah. talk about that. Like how, how'd you get come up with the name and, and why big red? Well, big so when I first bought my first truck, I had a couple of used trucks and then the amount of miles I was putting on and the amount of repairs, I thought it'd be better to, to have a new, a, use, a, a new truck. So I made a deal on a, I couldn't get a, I couldn't get financing on a Kenworth and my, my dream truck was a long nose W900 Kenworth, but I, I wasn't secure enough in my credit rating. And the only thing I could really afford the payments were for a Mac truck. So I started off, I had, I had a Mac, an old CH600 Mac with a, 460 e tech engine in it and i ran that until it was paid for and i had finally had the down payment so uh kenworth and Sa- in uh, regina had uh, taken an order for this red w900 kenworth that came in on special order and the customer backed out on it and i uh i was offered this truck and and it was within my price range i think i paid thirty nine thousand dollars for this truck in november of 2003 
I bought it brand new. Um, it, the paint's been kind of faded on it over the years, but I remember walking into the shop and seeing it for the first time. It was like an orangey red. They call it Viper Red. And uh, that was it. First person in the passenger seat was my son, Jonathan, at seven months, believe it or not. Wow. We took the truck home, and uh, I've had it ever since. I've, uh, I've yeah, 19 years of her now and three point seven million dollars on it. Um, yeah, it's it's – First person and passenger was Jonathan. Um, I've uh, I've put one of my a dog that traveled with me for about fifteen years. I put him to sleep in the passenger seat. His collar still hangs from the mirror. She's uh, and she's named Big Red because my children they used to sit at the 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 porch and watch the truck come around the corner when Dad was coming home, and they called it the big the, the big red truck. So that's kind of what turned into Big Red. Man, that's that's a way cooler story actually than than I thought it was going to be for for the name. I that's huge, and that that hits me because you know, you know, I work away too, and and you know, um, you know, my my kids get excited when I come home, and and they're like, oh, dad's mm-hmm. home, dad's home, and and sometimes I'll take a plane, but sometimes I'll also take a bus. I only live in I live in Calgary, so working in Fox Creek, and when when I can't get on a plane for cheap enough the bus is $21, you know? So like, what not really? take the bus, take the bus. And you know, my kids meet me at, yeah, my kids will meet me at um, like a mall or wherever the bus gets off. And they know when I come, when I roll in, cause it's like, Oh, there's the big bus. There's the big bus. Right. So, yeah. you know, they, that's awesome. they, yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. Uh, now, and Jonathan, seven months old, man, look at him now running, running his yeah, own seven months old. Uh, equipment. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually, he's on hiatus right now. I don't know if you heard or not, but he, uh, unfortunate accident about two weeks ago, he busted his, uh, busted his elbow cap in half and, uh, broke his bone. So he's in, he's in a cast now for, I think they said up to 12 weeks. So, uh, Oof. so I'm doing, I'm doing double duty right now. That's why I was trucking all day today, trying to get some loads out of the way. And that's what you gotta be, this. you gotta be a proud papa there, man, because you know what I mean? Like your son is just, he's getting right in there. He's, he's like, Hey, oh, yeah. you know what? Let me take some of the, some of the loads off you, you know, some of the load off of you and, uh, and, mm-hmm. and, 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 you know, help out in the family business. And that's, that's huge, man. You know, I don't have any sons yet, but Hey, and I hope my daughters never join the oil field. But I mean, like, you know, it'd be kind of cool. I'm first generation. You know, maybe, you know, someone take over for yeah. me someday. Uh, hopefully not as a swamper on a vac truck, but, you know. <laughs> That's all we can really hope for. So what do you do in the oil field then, can I ask? I just work on a vac truck. Uh, you know, vac oh, ollie gotcha. and stuff like that. I don't have my class one or three. I'm just a swamper. But uh, I, I don't trust myself uh, with class three uh or one for that matter uh Mm -hmm. i can hardly keep a pickup truck between the ditches so you know i (laughs) I have a history of putting them in the ditch and and go big or go home right so um i i don't like nighttime driving Uh, i would probably hurt someone or myself so i (laughs) i stay clear i the learn trying to learn the shift pattern freaks the hell out of me you know what i mean i i I make jokes about it all the time oh dude I don't think I could, I don't think I could handle it. No, it's an acquired taste. It's not for everybody. I, I don't know. I've been doing it for so many years. I don't even really think about it anymore. And now it's a competition with my son and I. So Jonathan, he's, he's got the knack. He's got the gift for hauling big stuff, like 17, 18 feet wide. And then of course the question come, well, how wide have you been dad? And well, I think my average is 26 wide. So he, uh, my long, my widest load was 26 wide. So Jonathan, now it's a fight to see if he be as, as big as me, but <laughs> I was. Oh. oh, you know, you know, he'll, he'll do it one day. He'll, you, you gotta oh, yeah. get up there. Yeah. You gotta keep Look at, look at, I don't know if you watch hockey or not, but look at, look at Gretzky's record. Ovechkin's creeping up on yep. it, right? That's Jonathan. You know, one day he's going to be at like 24 wide and he's going to be like, dad, I'm coming. I'm right on your heels. <laughs> right? I know. It's, it's, coming. it's coming. I know. He doesn't That's know awesome, it yet, man. but when he's all healed, he's going to do some air cedar pulling in the spring. I'm going to try and get him into that to try and take off some of the, the stress on that. So he's going to be, he'll be, he'll be wider. So he'll be getting used to that really darn quick. I just need him to heal up so he can get back in the truck so I can, I can get a break here. <laughs> yeah man every time i've talked to you the last couple of weeks you know you've, you've been super busy and i mean that's not necessarily a bad thing um you know um speaking of jonathan does, does he want to do this full-time forever like is does he see himself you know 
you know, being, being a trucker, being, you know, a long hauler or, or hauling equipment or where to see him hauling sand, yeah. maybe. I don't know. I always given him the option. He can do whatever he wants to do. I think he's, he's so talented when it comes to mechanics and building and uh, like this kid, I've been training him since he was young. So up in like a couple of years ago, before he even got his driver's license, I could back a semi in the shop and he could do a brake job and an S cams and a complete brake install on the back with bushings and that take, take axles out and, and never been, never been in school for it. Just stuff that I've taught him in the shop and how to fix our own stuff. So I think if he wants to do it, I hope he wants to continue with it. Cause obviously when I'm done with it, there'll be nothing. I don't know what I'll, I'll probably move on and everything will just go to waste. So he's got a perfect opportunity if he wants to take over what's here. Yeah. Uh, my dad, similar, similar thing with my dad. My dad had his own uh, metal roofing business, or I guess he did metal roofing, but he has his own metal, uh, his own roofing business, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And I worked for him for, oh, geez, from the time I was 11 till I was 18, I moved out here. And um, the, the plan was for my dad to, all, to, to, to build it up. And it was pretty successful. He did really well with it. And the plan was for him to, to toss it down to me or hand it down to me. And, you know, as the time got closer and closer, I was, I was only 18, right? I'm like, man, you're going to take everything you built and give it to an 18-year-old kid who, who doesn't know where he wants to be in his life, right? And, and I'm going to destroy that business. And so I didn't want nothing to do with it. And good thing, I don't like roofing anyways. That's not nope. for me. <laughs> no, not for me. No, I learned real fast and real hard. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't like being up on a roof. It's just not for me. But yeah, he, his company just doesn't exist anymore. You know what I mean? He got too old and it, his body broke down. No one to pass it down to. Sold everything and walked away. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and that's unfortunate. Looking back at it now, where I am now, I'm happy with where I am now. I'm happy. And looking back, yeah. I could, I could probably say like, you know, I, I could have done good with it. I could have, I probably, you know, but look at every roofer, right. And looking at my dad, I don't want to be like pretty much in a wheelchair by the time I'm 50 or 60. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to look back and, 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 and be hunched over and my knees are just shot. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I had jump, jumping off trailers for 20, 30 years now is taking its toll on my limbs. And my wife laughs at me all the time when I go to get up in the, in a chair, get up in a chair, you know, you make the old, <laughs> she just giggles every time I do that now, but it's becoming a common occurrence. So. <laughs> oh man. Uh, how long have you guys been married for? Uh, really? I've been married for eight years together for probably 10 close to 11 i think so we don't have any children together that was never something we wanted to do she had two children i had two children and it was too easy to dump the kids off at her exposed and take off to vegas for a weekend when we really wanted to so yeah. we've we, we've got zippy that's our child <laughs> I, I love that dog i love that dog um i i, I see that you might yeah. be having a uh, a merch line come out for him his own merch line there's talk of it. I, you know, yeah. Um, the people that are, are helping me design the website and the shirts and all that are taking the initiative on that. There's been a cartoon sketch version of him done for vinyl already. So it's there. Um, the website is going to launch, I believe on Wednesday next week. As you know, we had some troubles with square. Uh, we were selling hoodies and we did well. There was over 600 hoodies. And I think out of the special edition, we made a thousand, a thousand presses. And so we were 600 into it, getting close, and uh, Square just canceled us. They shut us down. And so I needed to catch up on things. Yeah, just, well, it was just, we were behind a little bit in the shipping of it, so we had to try and catch up on things. So I said, just, there's another company that has stepped up, a smaller company, one that's more, they're actually driven and, and stand behind what I stand behind what I stand for, I guess. So they can't cancel yeah. me. They won't cancel me. So we're working on the server and the protection. Cause there's a lot of evil people out there that are going to try and infiltrate it. So <clears throat> this time it'll be done properly yes. and there won't, won't be able to be canceled. So, but when we do it this time, there's like stickers, there's uh, you know, we had that cartoon rendition of big red done by an artist in Regina, Jeremy Walder Waldner. He did an amazing job of it. So we've got stickers, we've got, uh, I've got some CB trucking hats that are coming out. So 
we'll be selling those. I think people want them for some reason. So I've heard lots of people asking. We may as well put them on the website. So. Is that your phone or mine, Dick? I'm here. Are you here? There you go. Yeah, you just yeah, went sorry. black on me for a minute. Yeah, nope, sorry. Okay. So, so I, I got a phone call, and, and that's going to sound oh. horrible, but hold on a sec here. I'm going to – there we go. I, just, I did this now. a little while ago. I was quick enough to hit the end button on it, so, yeah, this, this yeah. thing rings all the time. I just I just hit uh, uh, do not disturb mode. So so nope. now, <laughs> you know, my coworkers, man, I'm in camp. You know, they like to go out and they like to party. They like to hang out with me. And I'm the DD. So they like to be like, hey, do you want to drive for us tonight? Do you want and And you know what? Like the answer is always <laughs> no. But I would rather, I would rather them call me and, and ask for a ride than me having to the hear drug. the next day they got into an accident or something yeah. like that you know so it's good that they're calling me and stuff like that they'll find someone else tonight i told them i was busy so um mm -hmm. sorry about that uh didn't mean for it to cut out no there um but yeah so where what is your website where can people find uh for those that people that don't know where what uh what's the website where they can find uh your gear yeah it's so it's just uh big red merch dot ca so easy Big red, and then uh, that's an offsite of uh, CB Trucking Ltd. Ca too, which is my my business. So you can find pictures of Big Red and some of the trucks that we have. And uh, oh, I think Kim's put some pictures of the people wearing hoodies on there. Uh, just a little bit of a biography of CB Trucking and where it started and what we're about. So kind of a cool. I've never really had a website up until uh, you know six months ago, so or four months ago, whatever it may be. Yeah, I, I got my own website too, like within the last uh, eight, nine months here, I guess. Um, uh, you know, we got our own merch line now too. And, and you know, um, yeah. it, it's fun. It's exhausting, but it's fun. And uh, we, we do we do all of it at home, actually. I bought my wife the, uh, the sublimation printer. I bought her the t-shirt press. I bought her Cricut. Bought her all that stuff. So we do at home, keep costs down, um, you know. And uh, I was on live one day. And this woman comes into my live. I was looking for a website, but not like talking about it. And uh, this woman comes in and, and she just, you know, she, she, she's taking a real interest in everything. We, we get to talking and she's, she adds me over on Instagram and, and I, I'm like, Hey, so what do you do? She's like, I design websites. I'm like, Oh damn. I just happen to be looking. And, and uh, so she's come to be known at my house as auntie chris she she's become a big family friend um can't believe it's only been eight months or so nine months whatever it's been now right. and uh we hang out with her all the time we drive she lives in edmonton we we drive up to edmonton to go see her she drives down to calgary to see us we we hang out our kids are best friends they 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 love being around each other it just works out and She's got some big, interesting plans coming up in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, so that, that we're going to have to help her out with. And, and uh, that's, it's pretty cool. I can't really talk about it yet, but um, yep. when that time comes, I'm sure we'll, we'll all be, we'll be all be rushing over to help her out and, and be excited Good. for her. So, yeah. It just takes so, that person, right? Like mine, mine was a girl called Kim uh, on TikTok. She's Canadian chick. Um, she has been instrumental. She's designed the website. She's designed the lo some of the logos and the so the printings and, and got everything organized for the set the website up. Like the, the amount of hours this woman has put in for me is is unbelievable. So she's she's been a huge help. <clears throat> it, it, it helps when when you have someone on your team that uh believes in you and believes in 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 what you're doing and 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 doesn't mind you know like she she's like you know what i'm putting in the time and i'm putting in all this stuff because it's for you and and you give back to me you just don't know how you do it but you do you yep. make me feel you know and so you know i've i've sent her some business her way you know and and i've propped her up like like kind of what i'm doing now i've given her shout outs and you know so you know, we love Auntie Quiz. So, you know, yeah, she's she's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, man. Um, before we go any further here, uh, just in case, you know, people uh, don't listen to the end of the episode, uh, what are your social media handles where people can find you at? 
Yeah, I just TikTok is my big one. I guess Big Red nineteen seventy five five is my is my main account. I've got a couple offshoots there that I hardly ever visit as long as the trolls don't get me down on my big one that I don't have to resort to the backup accounts. But Big Red nineteen seventy five five. I think my main account when we went on the trip last year was like Big Red nineteen seventy five. But uh, man, they hit me hard during that, and I, I suffered violation after violation to the point where i lost that account for a while and, and then i had to start the second one which then turned out being the big account so <laughs> which was it's kind of funny because it wasn't until your trip that i and i started seeing your name everywhere that you know they're like oh this person's on tiktok right so i'm like oh i wonder so i i venture over to your tiktok and it said follow back i'm like shut up this guy follows me that's awesome so i'm like <laughs> fuck yeah follow back right and then uh you know uh, I, it, it kind of went from there and, you know, so, uh, I was, I was pretty pumped and I was able to be like, yeah, guys, that guy followed me first, you know, like he followed me first. Right. And, and, and people are like, oh, you know him. I'm like, well, I've never met him until last summer. We met this past summer, yep. actually. Uh, I don't know if you really remember. I was, I was the little guy that yep. couldn't see over top anyone's head and you were in a yep. porta potty I- with Jimmy. Yes, I have your uh, I have the Dick Frost sticker on my toolbox in the shop, by the way. So as you give me a couple stickers there. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Uh, those stickers, man, they're going quick. I have to order more. Um, really? I have to order more. So I ordered, I thought, which would be enough for the all time. But, you know, in, in the yep. blue collar industry, stickers are king, right? Stick them on your hard ass, yep. stick them on everything. Every time I go onto another site, everyone's like, hey, man, you got any stickers? I'm like, yeah, of course I do. And then I'm like, here you go. Right? They're they're a dollar a piece on the website, but I'm, I gave 90% of them away. I'm like, fuck it. You know? It, it, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. I don't know if I have one. We had, we designed a little, like we've got, there's a big shot of probably 10 inch by 10 inch uh, cartoon version for people's back windows of Big Red. And on the top, it's got freedom written across it, Big Red on the bottom. And we did a little one, just like a little four inch round one. And I had her print me, uh, I think a hundred of those. And then I just, I hand them out when somebody sends me a, a card in the mail and I'm on top of my office work, I will then reply to that with, with an envelope with a couple stickers in it or a sticker in it and a little note saying, thank you so much. And they're just something really cool just to hand out to people. I don't, uh, those are the freebie ones. The big ones cost quite a bit to make. So I got to be careful how I do those, but yeah. Yeah. Where do you get them made? I got a local company in Swift Current, a local design shop that I've been using for my, my company logos for years and my business cards <laughs> and that, and they've all been helping me with the hoodies too. So nice. Been, nice. been doing business with them for a long time. We uh, got ours out of Norway from a company out of Norway, and so we got two. We got two batches made up. We got the one out of Norway. I, I don't know if it was the matte or the glossy, if that made the difference. But the one out of Norway, the stickers lasted longer. I had one on my heart. I have mm-hmm. one on my hard hat, and that one's been there for eight months or so, and it doesn't show any signs of wear and tear. The other oh, one good. out of Calgary, it's on the back of my phone, and it's already. It's been on there for three months three-ish months it's just gone really and, huh. and that's good to know because you know what i mean when i'm when when people are buying them when i'm handing them out i can be like okay no more from this one you know i i tested yep. it myself right it doesn't work i i want to have quality yep. so no it's a good idea especially when you're selling it because your name's on it right so you got to make sure everything's good we've had out of the 600 and some hoodies we sold, I think one had a bubble in it that had to come back. So of course paid for the shipping to get it back and we'll reprint it. And I don't know what you even do in that case. Do you, uh, I, I don't do the pressing on them, but I do the shipping on them. So anybody that wears a hoodie, usually I'm the one typing the wrong names into the computer and hitting post on Canada post yeah. websites. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> With my two so fingers. We, prior to the website, I was doing that. I was helping Casey with that. And we had the whole spreadsheet thing out and oh, so many orders got missed. And that's my bad. Oh. Uh, we, we've rectified that situation, but now doing it from home, she, she's a stay at home mom. She's chasing the kids around. She's taking one to school, picking her up from school, just trying to keep them entertained, doing the house stuff and, oh. and, and whatnot. And, you know, things still get missed. And, you know, yep. sometimes things don't go out for a little while and I get a message saying, Hey, that I ordered this. Where is it? It's like, oh, hey, 
sorry, it's here or sorry. Sometimes we've had supplier issues once in a while here. And uh, so we're dealing with that right now, you know, supplier issues, you know, shipping uh yeah. and COVID. Yeah, it's man. always COVID, isn't it? yeah <laughs> it's always yeah so and and when we do have um when we do have things with bubbles in them or uh defects uh which happened a lot in the beginning because we were just learning right it was like hey yeah. sorry we made this mistake and some people were like hey give me that that's that's uh, that's for uh first edition right that's that's authentic that's you know but now when it happens it's like okay here's your money back we'll give it to you for free or if we'll make them a whole new one and we'll save this one i'll i'll keep it for myself or we'll do a giveaway yeah. on, on TikTok or instagram where they'd be like hey here yeah. this one's this one's messed up it's got a little defect in it but it's free giveaway yep. right and it's a good thing to do right? yeah people love that stuff so um that's that's where we're kind of at with that and it's it's been a fun and but exhausting journey it is a lot of work. If somebody told me that I would be helping make hoodies, package them, mail them, and uh, take you know taking four boxes of hoodies to the post office after hours, you know, like the Pharmasave in Swiftcurrent has a little Canada Post on the back of it that's open till nine o'clock. I'm yeah. pretty sure those ladies in there wanted to kill me every evening because you go walk in <laughs> with 50, 60 parcels. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I don't know how much you're allowed to talk about it. But you know your 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 road trip, you know we we, we kind yeah. of rushed on by it a little bit there. Um, how did that start, and and why did it start, and what has changed, and 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 just your whole experience with it. So I can talk about it to a certain extent. I'm not allowed to support it. I'm not allowed to encourage another one, and I'm not. There's nothing. There's no convoy. It's done. It's not coming back again. It's not going anywhere. I have no interest in that. Um, been there, done that. Good to go. Um, got basically started with government over. Yeah, I got the t-shirt. I got the. I had the. I had the bracelets on there for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're. Hey, were they pink and funky or what? No, they weren't. They weren't kinky at all. It was two, two male officers. So I don't know. Darn. I didn't go to a strip club. I guarantee you that. So <laughs> I'm thankful for that. Apparently, sometimes it does end up like that. But yeah, no, it was it was watching the pandemic start, um, and you know, trucking through it right from the start. No restaurants, no gas stations. I mean, geez, they, they shut. I remember ripping down the highway and there wasn't a soul out there still trucking, hauling equipment and getting stuff done. And uh, it, it made it, you know, we were out there shitting in parking lots. There wasn't really any bathrooms open. So what do you, what do you do? Right. There's the coffee maker in the truck and cans of soup. And, and I didn't really want to be out there after the second week. And then things started to lift a little bit where restaurants could be open and you could use some bathrooms, but you still had to be careful. And the government restrictions, they just kept coming and they just, they didn't seem to stop. You know, everybody's getting vaccinated and you think this thing's under control. And then they introduce the, the, the COVID passports and you can't go into a restaurant unless you have a passport, but you know, we soon started to find out that you can still get COVID. You can still give COVID, even though you're vaccinated. They try and make this make sense for me, and I could maybe support it a little bit better, but they never did. And then uh, the border crossing mandates was the last straw for me, um, and just I was just irate. Like I just Saskatchewan lost me when they implemented the COVID vaccine passport on October first of, I guess it'd be 2022 now, and uh, or 2021 wasn't it? Uh, and that was it. And then when the border yeah, the border mandates came in for effect for January 15th. And I got, a, you know, people were mad. I was watching a lot of my friends that were, were retiring. I don't know how many drivers we lost, but I know the guys that crossed the border, we lost out of the guys that I know, probably a good 15 to 20% of them just enough. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. We're highly regulated as it is. And then they want to do and regulate us even more like that. And uh, I got a, a text message from that the bridge of Belton TikTok. She wanted to, uh, she wanted to take action and do something. And I kind of thought that the cards were in the right place. So I did a little TikTok in the beginning of January, just stating, Hey, let's give this a try. And I got a lot of my friends were, uh, you know, the naysayers that, nah, this is never going to work. You know, you guys are just wasting your time. 
and a lot of them phoned afterwards and apologized because it, it did it did it, it changed and, and people actually did stand up which was a nice thing to see but uh yeah so then, uh, a year later 12 months later uh the two main people tamara and i are facing two to ten years in federal prison for six indictable offenses including mischief and counseling to commit mischief um uh, intimidation, going against a court order, something like that. There's six offenses there, and with every offense, there's an, um, an intent to, I guess. So trial is for September 5th of 2023, so we still have, you know, eight months left. And that'll be interesting. They're going to try Tamara and I both at the same time in Ottawa. It's a bit of a three-week trial. It's yeah. going to be quite interesting. I've seen... That is uh, looking forward. That's that's kind of crazy. I guess I guess the question with that would be if if indicted and and sentenced, was it worth it? That would be supporting it. So I got to be careful how I answer that. Oh, but uh, true, true. Yeah. So I got to yeah, kind of plead the fifth on some things. But uh, I'm excited to clear our names. Um, you know, was, I worked with law enforcement for a number of weeks. Priority was safety. Nobody got hurt, um, but some feelings got hurt, and I believe it was the government's feelings that got massively hurt. So they want their pound of flesh, and that's what they're trying to evoke right now. So hopefully, hopefully they don't uh, turn you guys into martyrs. That would uh, that would yeah. be disappointing. But uh, I, I, you know, it's crazy how you can hurt people's feelings with a hot tub and, and, a, and a free concert, right? Like that's <laughs> exactly. that's crazy. That's just insane. Yeah. Um, but so what came out of that, which what I saw, and in my, my opinion, you guys united the whole damn country. It, it, the it's, world. It's crazy how, the uh, yes, lead into that in a minute. But yeah. at first it was the whole damn country. And no matter where you guys went, there was waving flags. There was people out on the highway supporting you. And, and it's funny how the narrative changed very quickly once the media got a hold of it, right? It yeah, was right. it was like, oh, no one's no no one is happy about this. <laughs> Nobody wants this. It's a small fringe minority. There's there's hardly anybody there. I didn't get I didn't actually hear how many people ended up showing up or but but there's a guy right. on TikTok and I think everybody knows him. It's Kopke, you know, the guy that does uh the Canadian provinces thing, like uh, he has his own merch line. He he doesn't come across as a guy who who had been in support of that, uh, but he was in Ottawa like all the time. I think he's from the area, but he was down there and he took pictures all the time, and they're all over his Instagram. <laughs> and when he was down there, it's just a sea of people all the time. It was it would quiet down during the week and it would ramp up during the weekends and you would see influxes. I heard up to a million people in downtown uh, at wow. one point. Yeah, I heard that. Wow. I don't know if that's that's true or not. I, I definitely seen a lot of people. There was uh, yeah, it was packed. So and it was a it was a good fun atmosphere. Like another a fun. It was a family. We had children there. Like the media, like you said, they tried to spin it. You know the. Nazi flag was out in the ooh, the, the beloved con Confederate flag by the white supremacists, and it wasn't like that at all. It was uh, you always have your bad actors in every group, and you, you know, regardless of the group, uh, it was good. I mean, there was it, it changed a lot of people, including myself. I've always said nobody probably learned or grew more than than myself in those three weeks. I matured tenfold, I'm sure. So. Oh man, our life experiences are what make us, right? And like you know, I'm I'm sure you were already to to me, to judging by you know your past and whatnot, from what I've seen since then, you're you're a very intelligent man, and you you know you're just a hardworking blue collar guy, and you know, um, life experience. Obviously, you're older, and you've been you've seen the what North America pretty much if, if from the inside of a, of a truck. Right. So, you know, your experiences have made you and, you know, so this, this road trip was different. Right. And, and mm. I felt it. I felt it every day. It since was, then uh, too, Right. Yeah. 
It was uh, it was something else, you know, the experience of looking in your mirror and not being able to see the end of the trucks and, and the traffic behind you. I'd heard rumors of up to 2,500 vehicles behind me at, at one point. That's a hell of a responsibility when you're trying to keep your speed proper. You know, like you slam on your brakes quick, it's a chain effect all the way back, and it could lead to yep. some pretty bad stuff. So constant communication all the time, We're always adjusting our speeds. Yeah. You know, there's a documentary coming out next month. I think the the airing is called um, Unacceptable is the name of the documentary. And we got a sneak peek of it because we actually had the board members back together for the first time in a year in Calgary. We had a Canadians for Truth uh, event where Eva Chipiak, which is our main, one of our lawyers, was on stage interviewed by Jamie Soleil and Theo Fleury and Joseph Bergo. So we all went to support Eva and uh, Tamara was there myself. We have to have legal, we have conditions against each other. So whenever we speak, we have to have a lawyer presence. Um, The lawyer was there. We were able to have board meetings and go through legal reviews over our upcoming cases because there is, you know, there's a $400 million lawsuit on our ass right now from lawyer Paul Champ in Ottawa. And uh, when that is settled, there's a four, three or $4 million lawsuit from an Ottawa attorney general. And one of the things they're they're seeking in order to, to try and seize that money is a conviction out of Tamara and I right in the in the statement of claims. So there's some big business here. We had to do some stuff, but we uh, we met after our board meeting. We were able to watch a sneak peek of this new new documentary coming out. I got to tell you, I've seen a lot of documentaries. This is this is awesome. It gives you the inside look of you know the hutterite colonies that supported us along the way and fed us um they detail the interview everybody and it's not arrogant, you know horn honking every 30 seconds i don't think i even heard a horn honk in it um it's an it's an amazing documentary i think february 17th or 18th it, it premieres and i think it premieres in calgary and i think we're going to plan on being there to try and help them support the opening of it because it is quite the it's quite the documentary brought tears to my eyes <clears throat> and it's called un- unacceptable. Unacceptable, yes. And where is that going to be, Aaron? I don't know the particulars on it. I know in Calgary is one of where it was. I know we were at a we were at a hidden location, and we got a sneak peek of it in a in a theater, and it was uh, it was pretty good. Tamara was sitting That's in a- between me and the lawyer. You know, she had the Kleenex box just to go in from about thirty seconds in. So <laughs> I remember watching Tamara's uh, video the night before she was arrested and uh yeah. you know the confidence she's like i know it's coming but she's like yeah don't feel sad for me guys right and it was like damn like is this a movie <laughs> right now right like that's it's 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 just so so incredible and and like you said you inspire not just canadians you inspired the world right and what followed after that with the Dutch and, and whatnot. And, and that's, that's pretty incredible. But one, one thing I, one thing I've noticed um, from your video, I, I can't remember how many days ago it was maybe a week ago where you posted it. Who ever like in a million years, did you think that you'd be sitting down with um, um, leaders from foreign countries or, or even your own country? <laughs> Christine Anderson is coming next month and, and she's yep. coming to visit us because you know, we're the, that's cool. You know, I, I would it have is. never known her name prior to her standing up at the EU and slamming our prime minister. Like she, he yep. so rightfully deserved and that put her on top there. She, that, that was an amazing thing. And she's coming here to visit with us and I can't wait. So we've got like a um, secret meeting, not secret, meetings but private meetings with her and a supper and a bunch of stuff that we're going to do and of course tomorrow and i'll be there together so lawyers have to be right there at all times it was uh it was hilarious watching keith wilson chase tomorrow around the other night at the the canadians for truth event because you know we have they pretty much be up to us if we're in the same room so tomorrow would get out and start walking towards the bathroom and i would be standing somewhere in the way and keith would realize that she wasn't beside him so she'd come <laughs> walking towards me and keith would be right in behind to catch the intercept it was we made him work we we call them their the world's most expensive babysitters <laughs> that's that's funny do you do you guys have to pay for them no right now we're covered under the jccf so 
We haven't any out of Africa yet. Yeah, the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms has been looking after us. They were one of the, the first organizations to fly lawyers out as soon as they realized things were getting big and, and we needed help. We were fairly unorganized. We had no idea it was going to be like it was. So John Carpe and well, I think he flew five lawyers out and then the two stayed, which was Eva Chipiak and Keith Wilson. And they've been right beside us ever since then. So in, in uh, God's sense too. Like, I, I see you talking about them all the time. Like you, you yeah. just love them. They're your, they're your Corso Chris, like the woman who they're, Auntie Quiz, the, the girl who, or the woman who made my, my website. They're yep. your Corso Chris. Yep. Exactly, hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. They are they are friends of ours now more than just lawyers. So it's absolutely uh, it's an amazing family. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. They are absolutely that's awesome. one good so, family. So did did Christine Anderson like reach out to you personally, or did she did she request you or? No, she's. Uh, I'm a little maybe harder to get a hold of. She's she's talked with Tamara a few times, and she's been on the phone with Tamara. I've been in a Zoom call with her kind of like a little fangirl, not too scared to say anything because there's a few other people in there. I'm like, I'm looking at Christine Anderson. I'm like, like right there. So there's some, there's a lot of stuff that's happened in the last year. Like uh, Preston Manning, I got an email from him the other day. You know, he's wanting to have the people's inquiry into the use of the Emergencies Act because he doesn't, I don't know if he doesn't trust the system, but he's he sees the way the governments came up with their own inquiry. And I know I, I'm not 100% behind it. I've seen some different stuff there being in Ottawa for a couple of weeks throughout the inquiry. Um, but Preston wants to have a, a citizen's inquiry. This is something that he's pushing for. And there's a, a number of top leaders across the country that are going to help with that. So that's something new that's that's a particular coming. I think they're just working the final details out right now on that, so, which is needed. The, the, the inquiry to that was a little bit confusing for me because – the government baroque the law, but the government's going to set up the hearing and and hire the people uh, themselves to te- to to yeah. see if they broke the law. And it's like, how does this make sense? So the 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 people, the the citizens' inquiry, I think, would be much better. Be like, hey, you know what? You work for us, right? Yeah. Like, let yeah. us determine whether or not you broke the law. Right. So here's a little That's... inside story, Dick. Um, in in the 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 commission's report, in when the when the Trudeau Liberal government or the government charged Rouleau with the task of doing an inquiry, there they set out with a set of rules that he was to follow. One of those rules is the Rouleau commission is to give a, a full copy of the findings of this report two weeks before the public release to the liberal government, the prime minister's office behind closed doors. Our lawyers caught that inside the documents and called them on their shit. But of course they just brush it off and don't do anything about it. How crooked is that? Like, are we, are we even there yet to see how un- unjust this whole country and the government is? It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, someone made a, made a comment in one of my videos that said, this guy probably doesn't even know what the charter of rights is. And, and I said, I'm like, Oh, you mean that little piece of paper that the government basically wrote to itself just in case it ever got carried away and, and, and tried to break their own rules. You mean that one? Yep. And, and just kind of stop them from becoming tyrannical. And, and here we are, right? Here we are. Yeah. And, and normally I don't talk politics. I follow it on my private Facebook account. I talk politics all the time. I, on yep. TikTok and Instagram, I can't. I'll lose followers left, right, and center. People don't come to me for that really? stuff. But like, yeah. but like, so I follow a lot of people that do get into politics and do talk politics, and uh, I try to stay out of it when, like, when they when they make the video. I'm like, hey, if I don't like your video, it doesn't mean I didn't like your video. You know what I mean? It's just like. Yeah. On TikTok and Instagram, my algorithm set up a certain way, and, and you know what? Uh, if I like it, it'll send me more of that, and it'll just make me mad. And then I'll I'll be yeah. I'll, and then I don't know if I'll I don't know if I'd be able to contain myself all that well. Like I've done a pretty good job so far. Like my main account on TikTok 
it had some serious suppression for a while because I got political and people didn't like oh. it. That's why I created my backup account, right? And and I refused to get into politics over there. But basically my, my video, I said uh, in my one video, a uh, year and a bit ago, I guess it was now, and it went viral, like 600,000 views on it. It was viral back then. And I was like, hey, can you imagine if the truckers, uh, grocery store workers, and farmers all had the same mentality as teachers' unions, uh, politicians, and uh, oh, fuck, I can't remember what it was, over the last couple of years, how screwed we'd be? Oh, yeah. Right? And, and, and you wouldn't believe how many people like don't support truck drivers how many people don't don't know what you guys stand for don't know that you know um how how many hours on end you stay up for how many how like and at the beginning of the pandemic like you said earlier you refused restaurant service you couldn't even go in to take a shit yeah yeah, tell me how the degrading that was for somebody like me using a slide on my trailer to take a shit in the parking lot somewhere. Um, that's insane. It is what it is. Yeah. That's I think that's insane. the world and the generation we we live in that generation right now, right? We're we're a bunch of entitled, sensitive little babies for the most part that are that are you know offended by the drop of a hat and uh, you know these big bad trucks that are crouching their space, but. A lot of people don't realize without those trucks, you know, the food doesn't wind up in the grocery store and, you know, the bread doesn't get yep. to the, it, the Petro to the fuel stations, the new vehicles to the car lot, all that stuff relies on us. You know, like my job, just, just myself is, is hauling the ag equipment to the farmer's yard so they can put their crop on the ground and, and another truck driver takes it over and hauls that product back to the elevator and the elevator trucks it to the, you know, the mills and. My Everybody's a critic nowadays. Oh yeah, everyone thinks that they're an expert at something, right? Like I have a podcast yep. doesn't make me a podcast expert. It makes me a guy who just <laughs> wants to talk and and joke around and shoot the yep. shit. Uh, but I'm not an expert on anything. Um, fuck, man, mm. you know, like that's just that's for sure. But um, my, one of my favorite things during during the whole convoy was when they, everyone was like. Oh, they said if the trucker stopped, the shelves would be empty. Well, guess what? It's two weeks later and the shelves are still full. And it's like, man, you don't understand how this works, do you? The whole world runs on a three month cycle, right? Yep. Like, you, you, you won't see the effects after two weeks. You won't even see it after a month. Wait two months from now, you'll start seeing it. And we did. We started to see it three months, four months, five months later, right? And it it's it's not looking good you know it's there's there's shortages of a lot of things now and that's 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 a whole other reason but yeah yeah oh yeah we're we're all struggling with it we've had our shortages of the oil and oh god the toilet paper crisis remember that one i still have four bundles of toilet paper in the basement of the house because everything every time we went to costco my wife figured we needed another bolty pack just in case you know i'll be wiping my ass for the next 10 years and not having to restock on anything so <laughs> i i never i never went with the hype of the toilet paper shortage um nope. i would go to walmart i'd see people with a shit ton of toilet paper i'd go to the grocery store same thing it it was crazy when I went to Shoppers Drug Mart to get something for my wife, and there's people in front of me, three deep, and people four deep behind me. Every single one of them have toilet paper. They they're they're just hogging all the shit tickets, right? And yep. and me, I'm there. I've got a magazine. I've got children's Tylenol, and I think a Gatorade. And it's like, yeah, I'm I'm good, bro. I I have enough toilet paper to last. This ain't gonna be a big deal. Don't worry about it. And it never was. I never had to yep. use a sock. No. The scare tactics, right? That I you know there was shortage there, but I don't know if anybody ever went for went without a piece of ass wipe, did they? I don't know. We we always seem to make it, and hey, if you ever did that, you probably had a Kleenex or paper towel or something you could have done it with. But. I always keep rolls uh, working outside in the bush. I always keep rolls with me in the truck. There's always paper towel around somewhere, and if not, yep. you know, I'm wearing a pair of boxers. I can free ball it for a little while, so you know, I can. <laughs> Just get up in there. There was bringing so I think I might have caught yeah. that quick enough. Hopefully, whatever you're here, I heard it a little bit, but I'm 
I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, no. Now, you're, look at the look at the friends you've also made out of it too, right? Like, I I don't know if they refer to themselves or how you even refer to them as, but the the dissident crew, right? You look at look at Clay and Jimmy and everyone else, right? Uh, you know, yeah. would you did you know any of those people before the road trip? I I followed you know a lot of them on her before, so I know who they were. Yeah, um, it's pretty pretty. I got invited to the the May long weekend celebration at Clay's house, and that's how we all met up too. It was kind of that was a good weekend. It was a drink a few beers there. That's one thing I love to do is drink beer. So I did that the um, other night in Calgary. I'm sure that. <laughs> I I wasn't gonna go actually um it was extremely like very last second for me uh i was invited to show up but i was like you know what i i don't know i i was just on days off and i'm like hey, i don't want to move and then and then uh you know um there was a couple people that were going so i was like casey pack the kids in the car let's go so we show up i didn't even know you were going to be there so i showed up and i'm like Holy shit! It's Chris. Chris is here. What's up, right? And then you know, got you, got you on the throne, on the, uh, not the podcast, but on the throne, the uh, one minute edition, and uh, got you on there. You were briefly in there. Caught you in a porta potty with Jimmy. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, uh, you still have the yeah. video of that. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's on. It's on my main account on my uh, on the throne uh, playlist actually on the website. And, Awesome. I can send it to you if you want. Yeah, I can go check it out too. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny as hell. So, so I'll back up for a second because I said, um, you know, when I when I noticed you were following me, uh, and I was like, okay, that's cool. Do, do you remember when you started following me and like what which video you saw? That it's probably probably not. So much has happened since then. So I was yeah, I was just. My head spinning with what I've, yeah, I like. I'm the guy that just scrolls TikTok, and if I like somebody's content, I usually, I'll hit the follow button. I still do that to this day. I never go to, you know, in the bottom of your TikTok thing, you can watch the people to follow you, or you can do your for you page. I never leave the for you page because I'll get the best of both worlds, and Same. I try to follow as many people back. I'll always hit the button and see, hey, are you following me? And if they're following me, then and they have content. That's one of my big things is I I have to the people that I follow back, I would I'd like to have content. So because if you're not taking part in it, then it's okay to follow and not get followed back. But if uh, yeah, I always try to make sure if there's content there, I follow back all the time. And that goes bad too some days because you get these trolls out there and they follow you. And then you follow them back and it messes the bloody algorithm up. I always got, I got mad at the dissident crew a little bit there because they were trying that bridge the gap bullshit. And I'm like, could you guys quit? Because I've got, you know, like the lives are coming across and Josh and everybody. And I, I, you're a lot better than me. You can live in the same city as that guy. But I tell you what, I'd be, I'd be hiring a landscaper for him. <laughs> well, <laughs> and that's not a Josh, threat. Oh, yeah. I think he was one of the yeah. first idiots that I blocked, I think. So. So, he just fills it just filth. Yeah. And he needs a comb too. <laughs> <laughs> I I follow Josh. Um, you know, I it's it's the chaos, right? It's the chaos of it all. We're in the same city. Um, you know, he, he's always popping it up in my FYP because he's always going, you know, after the same people that I follow. Uh, you know, you, you know, a lot of people take take the following thing the wrong way too. Like, I I follow them doesn't mean I support everything they say, right? You know what yep. I mean? And 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 sure, we're, we're friends, we're friends, you know. So, but you know, there are times where they say some people say some things, and it's kind of like, you know, what? Oh, I don't agree with it, so I just walk away. It doesn't mean I'm gonna yep. complain about it either, right? Like, oh, you said this, blah 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 blah. But so you know. Uh, I follow Josh, anyways, just just for the chaos, I guess. Uh, that 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 brings. Sorry for the stutter. Um, you know, he. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of there's a lot there. There's a there is there's a lot there. Um, but speaking of trolls, you are your own um, self 
self-titled self, world's biggest troll. Self-proclaimed. Or... <laughs> self-proclaimed. That's the one. Self-proclaimed. You're the you're, you're self-proclaimed. <laughs> Would you say was it the world's biggest or just just Alberta and No, no, not even close to the world's. Big... I'm I'm the kind of guy that you know I've changed my troll method over the last year. I guess I used to be the guy that used to seek out the trolls and then I'd have fun with them, but. Now I kind of let them come to me, and then I, I I have a way online. I could stick my finger right in the rib cage and just twist a little bit, and a lot of them don't even know they're getting trolled until they're mad, yelling and swearing on the reply comments, and then they realize <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happened to me. That happened to me. Uh, oh, geez, a year and a half ago, I guess. Um, I thought Buddy was being a troll, and he kind of was, but uh, I messaged him about it, and I used to like approach trolls differently than i do now i used to tiptoe be like i didn't want to step on any toes so i was like hey man sorry i didn't mean to offend you that's what I'm not what i'm here to do you know but i think it was around him where i was like get fucked bud you know like i i'm done with your shit and i i messaged him and i'm like hey man like leave me alone if you're not gonna follow me and and whatnot just leave me alone i don't want nothing to do with this he's like man He's like, I, I think it's funny. I'm trolling you to help push your video out. He's like, uh, I'm there in the algorithm. I know what I'm doing. It's, it's going to push it out and you're going to grow. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I followed him. He followed me. We still talk actually a little bit right now. And uh, and he messaged me a couple nights ago. He's like, I knew I knew you could handle the, the trolling and, and whatnot. So, oh, did you freeze? There. Uh, the there you go. You're back. Yeah, yeah you're sorry, right. you got my wife. Call, I... I take it. No, the Wi-Fi kicked out on me, so I could feel it fade in there. So I went back to cell service, which I think I got enough bars, so I should be fine. So, yeah, you never know how the algorithms work, hey? Like it's, and that's the thing that I don't understand. I know, I try to stay on my side. I, I stay in my own lane. I usually don't venture off, and I don't go onto other people's profiles. If I see something that I don't agree with, I usually I'll scroll past. I don't have enough time in the day to get into petty internet fights but when they come to my page with their stupid comments that then gives me the chance to do my little f famous clapbacks and and start a dialogue most of the time it's just pointing out how ignorant somebody can be um i've seen some pretty horrible comments i mean jeepers if i did some of the comments if i said some of the things that they say holy yeah. would there be ramifications and probably be on the oh, news yeah. over it but some I delete, um, the ones that annoy me, like the ones that, you know, they're relentless and they never quit. I usually just block now. I've, I've actually learned to use the block button and I'm pretty good at it. And then I'll, I'll, I'll play with, I was playing with one guy today and I, he'd leave a sly comment on one of my clapbacks and I just deleted his comment. Then he'd wonder where the comment went and deleted it. And then he gets mad because I'm deleting the comments when he realizes that I'm actually deleting the comments and. It's my it's it's my page, man. I I can delete the comments if I want. There's nothing you can do about it. If you yeah. don't like it, don't come here. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, you know it's this is my. I, so I don't know how to say that. Um, this is my my place of zen, I guess. Like TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff. Like I have a lot of fun on there, right? Yep. And you know. If you don't want to have fun and you want to be a bummer and you want to rain on my parade, um, you go ahead. You know what? Um, I'm not going to answer back. I'm not going to feed into your bullshit. And I've said that. I've I've been – I've I've had a couple little collision courses, I guess, that, you know, you were you, – you might have seen a couple of things and whatnot. And, and, but I usually – I don't answer back and, yeah. and you can, you can write, you can have your, your videos and your clapbacks or whatever you want to call them directed at me. Um, thanks for the traffic. I'm not yeah. sending the traffic back <laughs> your way. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, you talk shit about me, talk shit about my family. Don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get involved with it. Right. This is fun for me. Yeah. Right. And yeah, I, I have followers that I really enjoy having on my list uh, uh, as followers that that don't want no part of the beef anyways. They don't want to see me having this drama filled, fueled fucking yeah. war with someone on their page. So I'll unfollow. Right. And and I enjoy having them as followers as much as they enjoy having me as a follower. So if someone's going to start their drama, if I have your phone number, I'm calling you. 
right? Yeah. We're, we're going to have a call about it. I'm not going to make a video about it because that is no. just childish bullshit. So, and, and you, sir, you have what, 256,000 followers or something like that? Uh, just under 200, I think. So I've got, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of people that, uh, and, and you can see, you know, I got to be careful how many clapbacks I do and I've tried to tame them down. I hit 2023 thinking, let's just leave the clapbacks alone. Let's see how we do. I enjoy yeah. them. I, I love the fight and I think it's kind of a stress relief when, you know, when you're dealing with all the bullshit out there and it's fun to take somebody's hate and turn it around and try and if it's make them look silly or, or shed light on it or make fun of them, I guess if you could turn hate into comedy in some stretch, I'll try to do that a little bit. Yeah. I, I like and that's fine. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's nothing, you know, I'm never going out there and saying, you know, I'm going to come find you and, you know, um, it's all just pointing out somebody's <laughs> negative attitude and saying, come on, man. Like today it was, you know, somebody commenting, I can't wait for Chris to be in jail this time next year. And I thought, why are you here? Is what I kind of said in my clap back. Like if you don't agree with me and you don't like what I, what I am, yep. go away. Like I, I don't care about your opinion and, and uh, yep. yeah, it fills up with comments and people have their debates. And, and then usually what I find is that person that I do that clap back on will then spend the next two or three days defending himself in the, or itself <laughs> in the comments section. And, uh, and then sometimes it'll lead to like nothing but a, just a troll fest and then i have to try to block them anyway but i don't know well it's definitely so interesting with your number of followers right you don't know the mental and i bring this up all the time i talk about this all the time it's a pretty big talking point for me because i have a really big issue with people that do this right um that have they kind of almost call people out in a negative way like if you're having fun with it and you're being comedic about it and you're not trying to get like a mob of people after this person oh, it's yeah. different but like you don't know the mental health uh, the state of people's mental health especially 150 whatever how many hundred thousand two hundred thousand yeah. whatever you don't know the mental health of all those people right and you don't know if you're gonna put out a video and you're gonna be like this guy over here you need to go find him or or not even yeah. that or even not even that this guy over here, he's, you know, he's a racist or a bigot or whatever. And, and then all of a sudden there's someone that just has something up here. That's just a little loose. Yeah. And they're like, I know where that guy lives. And then, they, or, or they, I've seen that guy walking around and then they go, yeah. because I, I've had this conversation too, you know, when people notice you in public, they see you before you even see them. Cause Absolutely. they know yeah. what you look like. You don't know what they look like. Yep. Same thing is going to happen with someone that doesn't like you. They see you first, and depending on their mood that day, depending on their state, you, it could be yeah. bad. It could be bad. I'm uh, well. You've met me, so a lot of people don't realize. I think the biggest thing when people see me in public, and the biggest comment I get is, "I didn't know you were that big." Like I'm six foot four and 260 yep. pounds. I'm a big guy. I'm intimidating to some people when I, you know, I've got broad <laughs> shoulders and I'm, I'm a big, and that scares a lot of people or intimidates people, but maybe online, I look a smaller, maybe, I don't know. Um, and that thing, therefore they think that, you know, I'm a pushover in, in person. I'm not sure. I'm really careful when I do my clap back so that I'm never, you know, I'm conscious that, that there could be somebody out there with some mental issues. One of, there's a troll out there and she's a, she's pretty hardcore. She's on a lot of my troll posts and she's always commenting negative things. And, and I always wondered if, you know, she left a comment one day saying that she struggled with mental health um, and is on medication for quite some time. And I thought, you know, you know, that's, that's an opportunity for if, it, if an actual troll, if I was a vindictive piece of shit that wanted to jump on an opportunity to make somebody look really embarrassed that would have been it but i'm not that's not who i am um you're fair game if you leave your stupid comments on here but as soon as i hear mental health and, and ever since i found that out about her i've kind of left her alone i'll let her make her comments but i'm not in there to push any buttons mentally um i definitely can get under people's skin from time to time and i'm proud of that but i try to stay away <laughs> from those sensitive topics you know i've got my I got my standards that I kind of adhere to. So, yeah, absolutely, and that's amazing. I uh, I love that. Um, I'm the exact opposite uh, of you. I'm five foot four, 
I am like yep, 180, 180 pounds. I'm like a little chihuahua nipping at the ankles, <laughs> right? And uh, um, I used to have a fairly big mouth. I mean, I still have a big mouth. I mean, I still like chirp, 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 chirp. And yep. I know I can handle business if I needed to, but like I'm a lover, not a fighter, right? And yeah. I would rather I'd rather be diplomatic and take the diplomatic approach and and whatnot. So. And and with with me, especially online, like I said, you know, I got followers and people that I highly respect that took me a long time to earn the respect of myself it, that, from them back. Um, that would just hit the unfollow button because they don't want to see that shit, right? So it's like you know what. That's fair. Uh, it took me a long time to to build what I have, and and it's still going. It's still a grind, you know. And at the same time, I also have sponsors, right? I have I have people that that like uh, affiliations, right? Yep. Like Heat Waves and uh, Grunt Baby. We we just got that one. By the time this podcast comes out in a week and a bit now, um, that should be. I can talk about it now. Fuck it. Uh, it should be already on awesome. underway um do you remember the alberta strong um logo that you always see after the yep. four mac fire alberta strong came out i had a couple of their shirts um i am now an affiliate for alberta strong uh that <laughs> also has that also hasn't happened yet um it like we the email had the emails have gone out the conversations have been had um i'm we're there but we're at this moment we don't have any pictures or videos or anything to go out with that. So hopefully that comes in the mail within the next two weeks. I mean, Hey, if it doesn't surprise, um, you know, so, but, but there's things like that, you know, and, and the heat waves and, and the lunchbox, I got that metal lunchbox thing going on and, you know, I, I don't want them. I feel like I've gotten all that based off yeah. of my, my persona, my, my, Hey, I work in the oil field and I'm just here trying to feed my family have a little yep. fun along the way and you know what my my zero drama thing i want that to continue so you know yep. what we we've had some people try to shit on that but yep. you know like, oh, i think we've done well. a good job yeah oh yeah yeah that's the For thing sure. about the internet too you know you've got faceless people out there hiding behind keyboards and and uh yeah knowing that and you know who the fake accounts are when you look at them online but yeah and that's the brand that you build, you know, like, and good for you. You stick to your brand and, you know, you you keep away from the drama side of it. And I'll be like polar opposites where I'm, I'm kind of in that drama. I sometimes wonder why when I'm trying to get caught up on comment, because I read, I try to read every comment. I can't reply to every Same. comment, although I'd like to, I go through my messenger list and I'm kind of an anal OCD kind of guy where I have to make sure that every message in my TikTok inbox is read and, if somebody yep. asks a question, I reply to it. If somebody sends me just a generic video, I'll usually look at the video and then skip off. Um, Messenger on Facebook, I'm the same way. I, I can't stand having messages there that I haven't read. A year ago, it was insane. I'd look on that, and then all it was was like 99. <laughs> and then, I mean, I still don't have that phone either. So there's a phone that the police kept in Ottawa that is full of messages that I have no bloody clue what, what's on there. Because now you get that thing back somewhere. They're scrolling. They Don't scroll to the left. Don't scroll to the left. No. Yeah. There's no Tinder on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Uh. You know, I try to reply to every comment too, and you know, I had to turn notifications for all my social media off basically when I started yeah. growing on TikTok and Instagram, and and um, I try to reply to every comment. I try to get back to everyone, but when it's come, something had to something had to go. When it when when I did that though, and what, what has gone in replace of that is I now have at all times between fifty and a hundred text messages that I never read. Right, <laughs> it's because I'm busy replying to messages everywhere else all the time, yeah. reading comments, replying back to comments, talking to my wife, working a hundred and some odd hours a week, you know, and 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 you know, with all of that, it's just the podcast now right and merch and it's just you know what man it's a busy life it's fulfilling and and i, I wouldn't change it for I, I wouldn't change it for a thing no i either was talk about that in the past too like chris you should i've got kim the one that did i call her my handler she's the one that did the website and she's 
I think she's got me going on the disrespected trucker radio show on Mon- no sometime this week, but um, I think it's Monday. I'll actually be on Kramer, his podcast, you know, wow. yeah. And he's excited to have me and Kim's pretty good friends with him and, and lined it up and he's like, that's cool. I get to have Chris on my show. And I'm like, but like, I look at Kramer with like, you, he's, he's up here. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's insane. Good for you, man. See, see what I mean by the things that have changed for you in the last yeah. year. You know what I mean? Um, that's that's incredible, man. Uh, that's good for you. That's yeah. amazing. That's yeah, awesome. I'm excited for that. Kind of found a voice, I guess. I did. Uh, I did Todd's uh, Todd on TikTok. His uh, he does that interview thing. I don't know if you watched his his interviews. You know, I give him credit. He was, I did his show last night. I think he had a good time talking to me. I think it went really well, but he, he asked some pretty hard ass questions there for a little while. I, you know, he's an African-American and coming from the controversy with the Confederate flag that was around, you know, me when we were out there, he had some valid questions to ask. And I think I, I think I answered him properly. I think I, I shed a lot of light on the subject and, and made my thoughts to him and i think he was good and accepting with that so i think like i said you know we could sit in here and talk online but if we were sitting together i'd probably buy the beer so <laughs> yeah yeah no i i saw that actually i saw like five minutes of it i think maybe and then i uh i went and started my own live right i'm like hey i gotta this this is interesting but you know i don't want to i don't want to hear everything he's saying and then you know i'm having him on tomorrow night so i yeah. i don't want to hear the same things twice maybe so i i, I don't know if we we kind of touched on a lot of the same stuff or not but um nope. yeah it was good yeah. that's good man i'm i'm happy that you you were able to take some time out uh for for me and i know you know which i tried to get you on the last podcast that i was part of uh, a few months back five six seven months ago maybe i don't six it was months a while. Ago. You got to keep um, on me. Like, yeah. That's the thing with me. You got to, hey, Chris, yeah. come on, just keep poking. And and then I come, like, I come home tonight and, and, uh, oh, I got paperwork to do. I got office paperwork. I got a truck work. I might have to leave tomorrow to go get ready for Monday. We've got air seeders to pull out of, uh, Eastern Saskatchewan to North Battleford, Saskatchewan. And I think there's six left that we got to do. Um, and I might be jumping into the drill pulling truck tomorrow and taking off to Whitewood uh, for the night and then down to Land Bank for a drill for, monday morning and if you if you give her shit you can get two of them done in one week which is i need about six of them done in one week to take the pressure off the load list but we'll we'll work at it (laughs) so quick question for you um Mm. you know now that it's 2023 and i don't know how long you've been doing it for yourself but uh e-logs yeah so i've been on uh, i'm a u.s carrier so Electronic logbooks have been mandated in the U.S. for, I think this is the fifth year now, fourth or fifth oh, year. Wow. So I've, I'm accustomed to them. Um, my drill pulling truck is a 97 Peterbilt. That was Jay's, my driver that passed away in November unexpectedly. So he is ELD exempt in that truck because of the year of the truck. It's 2000 model and up, but Big Red's a 2003. So I've had the box in it for, yeah, I think it's four or five years now. So it dumbs you down. And, uh, you know, like going from the ELD and the in Big Red when I'm in there, you, you do your pre trip in the morning and then you just drive and it, it shuts the driving on and off as you go throughout the day. And then having to go back to enter you entering it manually, you're lazy. Like they really dumbed you down a lot. And I find you you run the clock all day when you're long haul with an e log, they they want to think that it's safer. It's not. They're they're digitally IDing you is what they're doing, but you're pushing the clock all day long. Like you are there's no time for stops. Yeah. If you want to make any miles, you know, back when paper logs, if you were 15 minutes over your 10 hours of driving in the States or 11 hours in driving, you just drove and you backed it up. Nowadays it goes red and you can be fine for it the next day. So you don't make the time like you did. You rush a lot more accidents happen when you're in a hurry. And I think they missed the, you know, like I said, it wasn't for safety. It was for digital. I think it was a, New level of security, and you could look at the accidents on the highways now, and that would be a perfect indication of what the hell they're doing wrong. But government, Absolutely. you'll never really tell them that. We have them here on the back trucks now, just in the last week, and oh. uh, oof, how's that going? Man, not not good. 
no. not good. You know, there's times where we pull 20, 30, 40 hour days, right? And it's it's like, there's no more of that, right? Or, no. well, there's no more of that, right? So it's- You're gonna be, here, looking, gotta be careful how you answer that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but now, now though, what that big put pulls into question is I'm a swapper. What's that gonna do to my job now? Are they gonna start carrying two drivers? One, and the other driver be the swamper until this guy uh, hours out, and then you know they throw the other guy in there. Is my job up up yeah. up in the air now? I don't know. Um, does that is that going to force me? As we were coming back to what we we're talking about at the beginning, is that going to force me? Pretty much force my hand into getting my class three, right? Yeah. Like if I want to stay employed, do do, uh, do I adapt or die? Right. So that's the thing. It's an asset to have. And if your company you're working for is willing to pay for your training on that well, and get you yeah, it, it's are. an asset. Yeah. It's gotta be something you want to do. And if you, if you don't, don't really want to get into that, you I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's something I always wanted to do. I was, I was itching to do it when I was 18 years old and, and like itching, but back in that day, my father and I went to Yorkton, Saskatchewan to Van Ex Professional Driving School. And the course was four days. Normally it was five days, but it was in between Christmas and New Year's. And New Year's was the Friday. So we had course from Monday to Thursday. We got our 1A driver's license in those four days. <coughs> the bill was $950 per license. Now I paid for Jonathan's license last year. In September of last year, he became a 1A. It was a one month course. And the bill was ten thousand dollars, and that was his. So that hurt a little bit. And yeah. the bad part was, is oh, he's been your, trained. Your like the kid knows how to drive a truck. He's, yep. Oh, did I lose you? Oh, here. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Oh man, what's happening? There we are. Come on, phone. Don't do this, Sastel. <laughs> Come on, Sastel. I used to live in Saskatoon. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> the bars say I got full bars, but yeah, I don't know what happens there. So, so you said ten thousand dollars. That that part kind of cut out, right? Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah for ten thousand dollars in a thirty day course. So, so that that is um, that sort of spawned the price in the thirty day course out of humble, right? Yes, it did. Yeah, out of the humble accident. Yeah, that's Which, unfortunate, uh, but I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing either. Yeah, I don't think the the quality of driver that they're producing anymore. You know, I'll still go back to this. My license was nine hundred and fifty dollars, and I I got it in four days. But the trouble was, I couldn't get a job when I got out there because nobody would hire me because I didn't have experience, even though I was born and raised on a farm. Whereas now we're so hard up for drivers. You're throwing every Tom, Dick, and Harry in an eighty thousand pound missile and sending them down the highway. Like, yep. I, I would love to see the accident statistic numbers from ten years ago compared to now. I heard somewhere there was up to seven hundred accidents in the prairies already in the winter time, just with trucks, and that's inexperienced that's drivers. I, I see it in a daily basis. The quality of driver is gone. Yeah, sorry. Unfortunately. Uh, we're facing that same thing here in the oil field, uh, actually, with not just drivers, but um, the worker in, in general, right? Uh, right from laborers on up or down, depending on which way you want to look at a laborer, whether he's shit post, I guess, or the guy on the shit, you know, yep. bottom of the shit pile. Um, you know, basically, if you have a heartbeat right now, you're in, yep. right? It used to be who you know, not you know, and, and now it's hey, can, do you have work boots and can you swing a hammer, <laughs> yep. right? And what you're going to see is what we saw 10, 15 years ago um, with that. It's that, you know, people are moving up quick and uh, you get a lot of green workers that are going to be moving up, moving around, you know, yep. and, and not, not being fully qualified for, for their position. And it's, it's not going to end well it's it's gonna end exactly how it ended last time and and you know you know the pyramid you know yep. the pyramid how it starts and where it ends so i'm actually i'm actually uh i'm surprised there hasn't been more humbles to be honest with you and and i'm happy to say there's not but i'm surprised with the quality of drivers 
I was uh, I was pulling an air seater down the highway a couple of weeks ago on Highway 11 north of Regina in between Saskatoon. I was coming up to Davidson, and there's the truck stop junction on the south end of Davidson. There's an 80 kilometer zone air seater. I'm going. I'm pulling a huge, heavy. I could see 80, 90,000 pounds behind me, and you're 30 feet wide, and you know, 17, 18 feet tall, and 150 feet long. And it and a semi pulled out in front of me at the intersection. And was look we, we were we he, he stopped right in front of me and I had to come to a complete stop, and I was looking right out the windshield at his him in the driver's seat and we're sitting there. And I, I put my hands up and I'm like, "What are you? What are you doing?" And he would, he just didn't know any different. And this is, if you don't pull out in front of something like that, that could have been a catastrophe. If, you know, what happens if a school bus was passing me at the time? You know, it would have been the same damn thing, but. Yep. I see it. Yep. I see it daily. That's unfortunate. And same, same with loggers, you know, loggers are notorious, right? They're, yep. they get paid by the load. So it's, it's their road, not yours. Right. So it's like, <laughs> exactly. you watch out. Right. And yeah, it's, it's dangerous and, you know, don't call your kilometers or whatever. And yeah, it's, I don't know if you're familiar with calling kilometers. I don't know if you guys do that out in Saskatchewan or not. Like if you're on the back roads in Alberta, like on the lease roads, you know, you got to call your kilometers that way. If you're empty at kilometer two and you got a big rig coming at you and he's at kilometer seven, you got to like, know, you got to know that road. Hey, okay. If it's too narrow, one of us has to stop. And it's usually, I think loaded has the right of way. So oh. It's like, hey, I'm going to pull over at kilometer five or four. I'll be at four by the time you're at kilometer five. Yeah. So, like, hey, I'll wait here for you. And then, you know, but a lot of guys don't have their radios on or not listening to them. So it's, it's well, like, oh, look, you come around the corner a little too unexpectedly. Yeah. We do that on the side by sides. We take our side by sides out to BC every summer to a buddy's place and we go riding. We go up to the old mine sites up on the top of the mountains. And, yep. uh, yeah, you're climbing on those logging roads and you see call signs and mile eight. And of course, you know, you come around the corner, there's a log truck coming down the highway and they're, <laughs> they're not very freaking happy with you. That's for sure. <laughs> no, no. I don't know. But if we're, you tourists. Know we're tourists. We're tourists. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know who Chase Barber is, but, uh, he's also on TikTok. He's, yep. he's out of BC. Yeah. The logger, he's got that a yep. lot. Edison trucks. He's stealing Tesla's yeah, ideas. The electric. I love. Yeah. I love Chase. Him and I have been buddies for a bit. I don't know. Maybe you guys should. You should get on his podcast. He's got a good podcast. Oh, I didn't know. Blue, it, uh, I didn't know he had Blue one. No, uh, yeah, good. I've been on no, his yeah. podcast twice now. Yeah, he's got a good one uh, with Jordan Willie there, and uh, this two blue collar guys doing blue collar things. And uh, you know, I I love those guys. Do a video. Yeah, I've I've uh, I listen to his videos all the time. Of course, I, I enjoy watching him build the the Edison truck. That was pretty darn cool, yeah. an old E model Kenworth. Yeah, it is pretty neat. But uh, um, yeah, I guess I guess I got a one one question for you here before before we kind of wrap it up. I suppose. Um, do you still talk to any of the other uh, people that went on the road trip with you, other than Tamara? Yeah. Um, so the board of directors that we dealt with this week was um, was made up of a lot of the original road captains. So yeah, I had uh, in yeah we and we spent the night after the the show for Canadians for Truth. There we went over to the casino and I think we took up like half the side of the little pub and we just the, the people that were out there, you know, whether it was the guy holding the door, or the person that went for the paper or for the printer. Or, they were all there and it was like a big reunion. It was a, we had an awesome night an awesome time. Uh, we've had a little bit of discord Amazing. with a few inside the group. Yeah. Now there's been some separation within the group. There's been some egos that have, that have driven a few people away from it and away from us. And uh, that's unfortunate. Money is always a factor, even though it's all in escrow, but I, I don't oh. know when you introduce money, things usually go for shit. So, so. That's what I wanted to ask too. Sorry. Um, the GoFundMe. Where did the money go? <laughs> go give send. Where did the money go? Uh, how much was raised uh, with GoFundMe? I I I heard twenty million or something at one point, and like uh, you know that's what I mean. Yeah. The media blowing it all up, and yeah, 
Well, I'll give you this. I'll give you where it went. Uh, so the GoFundMe was up to ten million dollars, and GoFundMe released one million dollars to us, which went into a personal savings account under Tamara Leach's name, in that of which she added me to that bank account. So there was full transparency, and you know, she the, the the biggest thing that was on her mind is to say somebody, you know, somebody accusing her of stealing a dial a dollar, and she would break down in tears. So full transparency, a um, million dollars was released. GoFundMe then was canceled and then GoFundMe then wanted to, well, they wanted to donate the money back to a charity of their choice until the people spoke up and said, no, that's not right. Then the money was actually returned. So uh, we had about uh, $400,000 in e-transfers and that $1 million were released. We started the give, send, go then. And I believe that was up around the 9 million mark American. So roughly 12 to 13 million Canadian. And then everything was froze. Um, the Atter uh, Ottawa Attorney General's office launched its its lawsuits, and um, everything was locked up. Bank accounts were frozen. Um, so Jacob Wells with Give Send Go was able to give back the money that was raised to the people that raised it with the Give Send Go. But the trouble being is, three point some million dollars was trapped in the Canadian company called I think it's called Strike or Stripe. And it's that's the payment pro payment processing company that they take the money out of your bank account and they give it into gives and go, and that money was trapped inside that Canadian company at the time of the freeze. So, all in all, when the lawsuits are all going on right now, I think there's just around that five million dollars sitting in escrow, um, and it'll be there for a number of years. Unfortunately, Paul Champ has that four hundred million dollar lawsuit on us right now. My name is the first one on there, so it's literally Chris Barber versus Sexy Lee with the City of Ottawa. Four hundred million dollars. We've had to do some serious fighting there. They had an escrow um, or a Mariva injunction on us. Uh, if that would have went through, we would have basically been asking the courts for fuel money for our trucks every month. Uh, we were able to beat that successfully. Uh, and so now we're just into the lawsuit itself. It hasn't hit the, um, they haven't taken it to the, I'm trying to remember the word for it now. They got to get it uh, classified. They got to get it certified. Certified is the word I'm looking for. And they have not done that yet. We have a court date next month, I believe. Next week, the 24th of January, where he's going to go argue some more valid points on just how, and it's a ridiculous lawsuit. There's, there's no, they just, it doesn't follow any Canadian rules. It's bullshit. It's just, it's just hurt feelings maybe more than ever. I'm not sure what words I should use when I'm describing it, but it's definitely not something that's nice. So we're going to be hurt tied feelings. up in the courts. Right yeah. All chance kind of a different <laughs> duck. You know, with the inquiry, I made him, I made him say good morning to me multiple times just to, just to show him that I was there. I don't know. I don't have any ill feelings against the guy, but he's definitely, He's definitely a little different. What did uh, what did you get out of that inquiry? Like in your in your opinion or your mind, like what um what what did you find came out of that? Because honestly, I'm confused, right? Like, are you confused? <laughs> I'm confused. Well, I, I thought it was really good when I was out there. I spent two weeks out there. I was on I was on the stand on November second, and I believe it was for my portion of that. When I was on the stand, I thought Justice Rouleau was very interested in in our side. We were able to speak our truth. Um, we all did our testifying, and, and I thought it went really well. He was, it almost looked like he was fair. And and then the politicians hit the, the stage in the last week there, and you kind of watched that attitude kind of crumble a little bit. Um, Keith Wilson has made a couple statements now saying that he thinks the Rouleau will come out with, a, with an answer on the 20th of February. Basically saying, hey, if you're on this side, the invocation was justified. But if you're on this side, it wasn't justified. So he doesn't think there will be any action really come of it. And that's why I'm kind of curious to see where the people's inquiry will go. So, so it's just more, more, Ottawa th more of Ottawa throwing stupid money out. Yeah, absolutely. That was $16 million awesome. that was gone to waste there. No. No way. Yeah. Yep. Man, that's insane. Um. So with the two weeks you spent there during the inquiry and the road trip, uh, any, any good restaurants in the Ottawa area that you, you want to shout out? Yeah. The red dragon downtown is a little, uh, Vietnamese restaurant, I believe, uh, that a lot of the freer fighters go to on a regular basis. I think it's called the red dragon. Um, 
Yeah, that was uh, that one was within walking distance, and every time you walked in, there was friends there. Uh, we did, yeah, we basically ate out in restaurants every night. We were there with the lawyers, of course, to marry my we had to meet some pretty cool people, like Derek, Derek Smith, the guy that wrote the book, How the Prime Minister Stole Our Freedom. I met him. Um, and cool. some good news reporters, like sitting in, sitting there drinking a beer with Andrew Lawton and Rupa. And, uh, uh, man, it was awesome. There was a lot of people coming and going, a lot of a lot of faces that I recognize. Yeah, it's a good oh, thing. Man, that's, it's an experience. Did you gain a lot of weight? Did you gain a lot of weight? Nah. I think I always have. I need to lose a little bit, but I usually put weight weight on in the winter, and then I'll work it off in the summer. <laughs> All right, I got one last question for you there, Chris. Um, like, did, I want to know if the answer has changed or not from from before the road trip to now. Uh, if you could sit down and have a beer with one person and and just pick their brain, who would it be? Hmm. Definitely not Prime Minister Trudeau. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to know what he's thinking? I think there's just squirrels running around in the cage in there, to be honest with you, Dick. But, um, I've heard I've heard some different stories that he's actually he's actually an arrogant guy, but he's fairly fairly and he can be clever at times. Um oh, I don't know. The most arrogant people um, can be clever. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. you know, I, I still, I still kind of like Pierre Polyev. I kind of like him. There's, there's a lot of people that, that I, I've, I've gotten to know now. I can't say there's one. I guess maybe the one. There was rumor and talk that we were going to go see Donald Trump after we were done there, and then when the police did their thing, uh, that would be a goal right there to, to sit down and have a visit with Donald Trump. That would be, that would be an all time. That would make the, the trolls just lose their bloody marbles on my post if I did a TikTok with Donald Trump. But. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Can you imagine? You have to do. You have to do. You have to do a TikTok with Christine yeah. Anderson. Yeah. Yes. To. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah. You have yeah, to. Yeah, like, that no, is going to happen next no month. Babies. No. Like, when, when you see her, can you tell her that Dick Frost says hi? Can, I will. Can you just, yeah, for sure. She, you don't have to. You don't have to show her my videos. You don't have to tell her anything else about me. Just be like, hey, this little short Chihuahua wants wants me to tell you he says hi. He he's a big fan. When is it he actually? Loves... I think. What's that? I think it's the February. Is it the February eighteenth or the fourteenth? I've got it on my phone. I don't remember exact the dates, but Valentine's Day present. There you go. Yeah, right there, right. <laughs> and my birthday's That's... my birthday's in. February I can't wait. Too. That should be. I mean. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it get, should be get, a good get, time. Get, I can't get, wait to see how that works. Just get her to just you don't have to post it anywhere. Just get her to, on your regular camera on your phone. Just be like, get her to say, "Sup, Dick," and that's it. That's it. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be happy. I'll try. I'm uh, not making any promises. I'll do my best. But for hey, you know, Christine Anderson, you say, "What's up, Dick?" <laughs> she might. Her handlers might. I noticed when I was on the podcast with her. Her handlers came into the, in, not podcast, sorry, into a Zoom meeting. I noticed her handlers came in before to make sure that the room was clear and that she was safe to come in. She's got people that are under watching, I would imagine, security. So I can't wait. That's going to be a highlight next month to see. And then Tom Marazzo will be back around the 20th, I believe, in Calgary for Canadians for Truth. Um, we're trying to help these guys out. they got a really good media. They're starting this media campaign. It's kind of cool. Theo Fleuriel just texts me out of the blue every now and then and, and say hi. Never thought I'd ever see that day. Uh, <laughs> That's Lloyd cool. Minster. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Lloyd Minster on February 9th. I will be on the stage with Jamie Sully and Theo Fleury for the Canadians for Truth Lloyd Minster edition. So I don't know if you'll put this area, this episode out before that time or not. But. February 9th? I, I think so. I think this goes yeah. out. Uh, what's this? Yeah. Oh, what's this Tuesday is the 20 what? 22 23 to 24th so then you go the 7th which is the first or the second so yeah i think oh, i'll be like I, i'll be at home when this one comes out oh yeah nice. yeah maybe we'll see we'll see i don't know i don't know where i'll be that, that's just me terrible math yep <laughs> um fun, all good, fun fact man. about theo flurry Fun fact about Theo Fleury, he, his brother lives in my neighborhood. His brother lives a block away from me. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. His brother's never, his brother has never He's said quite... fun fact Dick Frost lives a block away from me, though, so. 
Uh, well, it should be fun. I kind of I consider him a friend. Now him and Jamie are good people, and Joseph, of course. Yeah, they're like behind backstage there. I did their episode in, in November. I did a show with them there, and they're out in the back just joking around, just like you and I having a good old time. And yeah, they're good people. So I love that. I love that. Um, once again, man, I just want to, you know, thank you for, you know, you're a busy guy. So thanks for taking time out to come be on the throne with Dick. And, and, you know, that's, oh. it's awesome. You know, we're not catching each other in a porta potty or anything or sitting <laughs> you know, opposite each other while taking a shit. Maybe the, the show will evolve to something like that. And I'll have to have you back on. That'd be, yep. that'd be pretty sweet. But uh, yeah, thanks for taking your time out and Anytime. talking to me, man. I thanks. appreciate that. Thanks for having me on, Dick. No, it was a good time. So hopefully, uh, yeah, have the rest of a good weekend. I'll go spend a little bit of time with the wife and see if I can watch a movie and get some maintenance done tomorrow and go to work on Monday. So, Absolutely. I'm thrilled that because you're on my podcast, the federal government's going to be listening to it. That is my favorite. <laughs> what up, Justin right? Trudeau? How's it going, bro? Sorry Caesar. about that video I made about you in North Battleford a couple years ago. Yeah, no doubt, right? <laughs> Back then, well, we were a couple of weeks away from the federal election, and I called you almost the soon, the soon to be almost or something, the soon to be former prime minister Justin Trudeau. Boy, was I wrong! I'm sorry. Oh, don't, shit. Don't, don't don't come for me. <laughs> well, hopefully, there's an election in the spring, like they rumor there is, and we can try this again. But if it's the same outcome, my, I'll I'll bang my head against the wall. Well, Jagmeet's taking the gloves off, apparently, and and. We'll, we'll see if we'll see if he actually puts, puts yeah right some, you know puts some gumption behind that that talk if he's if he's just all bark and no talk or I don't know if I he's said that a, wrong if he's all talk and no bark then then we have a problem but he's as big a pussy as JT is as far as I'm concerned so <laughs> and that's the cue yeah. for the federal government to be blushing now right like, exactly <laughs> is he listening oh. Jake Mead are you listening. <laughs> he probably will be now it's okay he probably knows my name so <laughs> well this is one way to end up on a federal watch list so thank you chris <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome uh, anything <laughs> <laughs> no, i'll be good man thanks for having me on i appreciate it so oh no thank you and uh hey i'm glad i kept on your your ass and i'm glad you gave me your actual phone number you know it wasn't just yeah. some uh um what's that word i'm looking for here catfish it wasn't yeah, i'm not yeah. I usually like that <laughs> no, all good so all right buddy okay you take care up uh, there you, you have a good night and uh everyone this it's been on the throne with dick featuring uh chris chris barber that's big red you know and awesome. uh everyone stay frosty have a good night absolutely Keep it real. Take her easy, guys. Talk to you soon.